Hello, in this video I'll be working through Unit 1 homework problems 62 through 66. For number 62, we want to show using the intermediate value theorem that the function f of x equals x cubed plus 2x minus 1 has a 0 on the interval from 0 to 1. Before we use the intermediate value theorem, we need to check the condition that our function is continuous on our given interval. Well, f of x is a polynomial function, and polynomial functions are continuous from negative infinity to infinity. They're continuous for all real numbers x. So we know that our function f of x is continuous, and we just need it to be continuous on our closed interval from 0 to 1, although we know that it's actually continuous on a larger domain than that. The next thing we want to consider is the y-coordinates at our endpoints. So my endpoints here would be the x equals 0 and the x equals 1. I want to find the corresponding y values for those endpoints. So I'm going to find f of 0 and I'm going to find f of 1. And to find those we're just using substitution back into our function f of x. So f of 0 is 0 cubed plus 2 times 0 minus 1, or negative 1. f of 1 is 1 cubed plus 2 times 1 minus 1, or 2. Now we want to know, does this function have a root on the interval from 0 to 1? And a root means an x value such that our equation is equal to 0. So is there somewhere on the interval from 0 to 1 where the y-coordinate is 0. Let's do a rough sketch of what we know here about our function. We know that f of 0 is negative 1 and that f of 1 is 2. And we know that our function is continuous. So I'm not sure exactly what this looks like here, although I could graph, I do have my equation, so I could graph it and get a better idea of exactly what this looks like. But since it's continuous, I know that I have to get, somehow I have to get from this first endpoint up to the other endpoint. Now it doesn't have to look exactly the way I drew it, but somehow with a smooth continuous curve, I have to get from that one point to the other point. And so yes, there must be a place where my function is equal to zero. There has to be a place between, and furthermore, we know where it is. It's somewhere between zero and one. That has to occur. Okay, so since f is continuous on the interval from zero to one, and zero is in between f of zero and f of one, Therefore, the IVT, or Intermediate Value Theorem, guarantees that there exists some value C. Now, C is an x-coordinate, so there exists some x-coordinate C on the open interval from 0 to 1, such that our function at that x-coordinate, f of C, is equal to 0. Okay, so again, c is an x value, f of c is the corresponding y value. 63. Show using the intermediate value theorem whether or not the function g of theta equals theta squared minus 2 minus cosine theta has a 0 on the interval from 0 to pi. Well, our function needs to be continuous in order for us to use the intermediate value theorem. If we look at each term here, each term is continuous. Theta squared is continuous, negative 2 is continuous, negative cosine theta is continuous, and the sum of continuous functions is continuous. So we do have g of theta is continuous. It's actually continuous for all real numbers, but we only need it to be continuous on the closed interval from 0 to pi. So g of theta is continuous on the interval from 0 to pi. Now let's check our endpoints, g of 0 and then g of pi. So at g of 0, we have 0 squared minus 2 minus the cosine of 0. The cosine of 0 is 1. So g of 0 is negative 3. For g of pi, we have pi squared minus 2 minus the cosine of pi. And the cosine of pi is negative 1. So we're subtracting negative 1. And that will simplify to pi squared minus 1. We want to know if g has a 0 between 0 and pi. So that's somewhere the equation is equal to 0. 
So our y coordinate in question is 0, and that is in fact between negative 3 and pi squared minus 1. So negative 3 is less than 0, which is less than pi squared minus 1. Therefore, the intermediate value theorem does guarantee that there exists some value c, some x value c, on the interval from 0 to pi, such that our function evaluated at c will equal 0. 64. Determine whether the IVT can be used to show that x squared minus 6x plus 8 equals 0 on the interval from 0 to 3. If so, find the value of c guaranteed by the theorem. x squared minus 6x plus 8 is a polynomial function, so we know that it is continuous for all real numbers, so it certainly is continuous between 0 and 3. So our function, we, I could call it f of x if I wanted to, but I'll just say x squared minus 6x plus 8 is continuous. I guess we should call it something. Let's just say y equals. Is continuous on that interval from 0 to 3. Now let's consider our y coordinates at our endpoints. So we have now y of 0 and then y of 3. At 0, our function becomes 0 squared minus 6 times 0 plus 8, or just 8. At 3, we get 3 squared, it's 9, minus 6 times 3, so minus 18, plus 8, or negative 1. And we want to know, is there somewhere the equation is equal to 0? That 0 is our y-coordinate. Is that y-coordinate in between 8 and negative 1? Yes, it is. This time, uh, our left endpoint is higher than 0, and our right endpoint is lower than 0. That's OK. We still have it being in between. So 0 is in between y of 3 and y of 0. Therefore, the IVT does guarantee the existence of a value c in the interval between 0 and 3, and that should be open interval, 0 to 3, such that our function y at that value c is equal to 0. And in this problem, we were asked to go a step further and find that value of c. So to do that, we just set our equation equal to 0 and solve it. And we know our solution will be some x value between 0 and 3. So x squared minus 6x plus 8 equals 0. Let's see if that's factorable. That's probably the quickest way to go. So minus 2 minus 4 We quickly multiply that back out, make sure it's right. So x squared minus 6x plus 8, yes. So we have x equals 2 and x equals 4 as solutions for this equation. However, the intermediate value theorem only guarantees a c between 0 and 3. It does not guarantee the 4. Now x equals 4 is a solution. It is a 0, but it is not one that is guaranteed by the intermediate value theorem. So the value of c we're looking for is just the 2. Number 65. Determine whether the IVT can be used to show that x cubed minus x squared plus x minus 2 equals 4 on the interval from 0 to 3. If so, find the value of c guaranteed by the theorem. Okay, our function on the left hand side here is a polynomial, so it is definitely continuous on the interval from 0 to 3. And I'm just going to call that left hand side f of x to help me with my notation here. So f of x equals x cubed minus x squared plus x minus 2 is continuous on that closed interval from 0 to 3. And let's find our endpoints f of 0 and then f of 3. So f of 0 is negative 2. f of 3, so we've got 3 cubed minus 3 squared plus 3 minus 2 is 19. And we are looking to see, is there somewhere this equation equals 4? So the y-coordinate of 4 is between these two y-coordinates at the endpoints, negative 2 and 19. So the IVT does apply in this case. 
So we can say f of 0 is less than 4, which is less than f of 3. Therefore, the intermediate value theorem guarantees that there exists a value c on the interval, open interval from 0 to 3, such that f of c is equal to 4. Now we're asked to find that value. So we're going to let x cubed minus x squared plus x minus 2 equal 4 and solve. And we can subtract 4 on both sides. If x cubed minus x squared plus x minus 6 equals 0. So it doesn't look like I can factor this by grouping. I'd probably just try a guess and check at this point, or if we can use our calculator, we can graph and find a solution that way. If I'm doing guess and check, I'm going to try easy values like 1 or negative 1, 2, negative 2, 0, and just doing a quick guess and check, it looks like 2 is going to work. That 2 is going to give me 8 minus 4 plus 2 minus 6 which is going to be 0. So I have x equals 2, and that is indeed on our interval from 0 to 3. So the c value is 2. And 66. Determine whether the IVT can be used to show x squared plus x over x minus 1 equals 6 on the interval from 5 halves to 4. If so, find the value of c guaranteed by the theorem. Now this is not a polynomial function. It is not continuous for all real numbers. I can see that there is a discontinuity at x equals 1. However, 1 is not in my interval. And if it's outside the interval, it's OK that there's a discontinuity there. I just need the graph to be continuous from 5 over 2 to 4, 2.5 to 4. So let's call the left-hand side f of x again. So I can say f of x equals x squared plus x over x minus 1 is continuous, let's spell that correctly, is continuous on the closed interval from 5 over 2 to 4. And I know that it's continuous there because I can see from the equation that it's continuous everywhere except for x equals 1. Let's check our endpoints. So f of 5 over 2, and then we need f of 4. So 5 over 2 squared is 25 over 4 plus 5 over 2, if I want a common denominator, let's go with 10 over 4, over 5 over 2 minus 1. So that's 35 over 4 over 5 over 2 minus 2 over 2 is 3 over 2. If I make that 6 over 4, then I can just cancel out my denominators, this is 35 over 6, or a little bit less than 6. Now f of 4, let's move that down a little bit. f of 4, I'd have 4 squared plus 4 over 4 minus 1. So 20 over 3, and 20 over 3 is going to be a little bit more than 6. So 35 divided by 6 is a little bit less than 6, and 20 divided by 3 is a little bit more than 6. So thankfully, the number we're looking for, 6, is in between those values. So you have f of 5 over 2 is less than 6, which is less than f of 4. Therefore, the intermediate value theorem guarantees that there exists a value c on our interval from 5 over 2 to 4, such that f of c equals 6. Now we're asked to find that value, so we're going to solve our equation. If x squared plus x over x minus 1 equals 6, so I'm going to subtract the 6 to get the right hand side equal to 0, and now let's make this all one fraction. So x squared plus x minus 6 times x minus 1 over x minus 1 equals 0. And the only time a fraction will equal 0 is when its numerator is 0. 
So for now, I can just ignore that denominator. And I just want to know where, when does this numerator equal 0. So let's simplify the numerator. We get x squared plus x minus 6x is going to give me negative 5x. And then plus 6 when I distribute that. And this looks like it is factorable. So x uh, minus 6 and positive 1. So x squared minus 5x minus 6. Nope, that does not work. Uh, let's try 2 and 3. So x squared minus 5x plus 6. Yes, that's the one that works. And that means we have solutions at x equals 2 and x equals 3. Now our interval goes from 2.5 to 4. So I can't use the 2. That 2 is not guaranteed by the theorem. The theorem guarantees we have a solution greater than 2.5 and less than 4. So our c value here is 3.